All right, let's discuss chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. We have a lot of information to get through. We'll start with the definition, spend a lot of time on diagnosis and treatment too. All right, so from the Global Initiative for Chronic Obstructive Lung Disease, or the GOLD management guidelines, which are really the gold standard uh, for the diagnosis and management of uh, COPD, um, how they define uh, COPD. So first of all, there's airflow limitation and it's not reversible. So that's why spirometry is so critical for these patients to demonstrate that. It's usually progressive, unfortunately. It's associated with an abnormal pulmonary inflammatory response to noxious stimuli. And very importantly, it's defined by an FEV1 over FBC ratio of less than 0.7. So those are, that's the simple diagnosis of COPD for you. In terms of where it occurs and how frequently it occurs in the United States, still very common, but decreasing in prevalence, thankfully. 6% um, of US adults have COPD. Um, it's, of course, very much uh, related to uh, the rates of uh, smoking in a given area. You can see that in the, east, in the eastern and southern United States, uh, rates of COPD are higher uh, because rates of smoking are higher, essentially, there. So let's look at a case just to talk about some of the diagnosis and, um, and potential treatments for COPD. This is Robert. He's a 70-year-old male. Uh, he complains of regular dyspnea that limits his walking to two blocks. Nice use of a functional assessment in there. And it affects his activities of daily, daily living. So we know he has at least moderate disease. He has mild shortness of breath at rest. He's using albuterol four times daily, which is a lot. Frequent cough, usually with mild phlegm. Uh, his past medical history includes hypertension and hyperlipidemia. Now, I see that he is getting an albuterol MDI, but he's also taking amlodipine. I assume that's for hypertension. Carvedilol is an interesting one because that's frequently used for heart failure as well as an aspirin a day. Now, he is a former smoker. He quit smoking five years ago, but he's been using for 40 pack years, so a long time. He rarely consumes alcohol. And here's his vital signs. So his blood pressure is high, his respiratory rate is normal, but his saturation on room air for oxygen is fairly low. You find on his exam he has a diffuse wheeze, but no ronchi, and his peak flow is also depressed, 350. Peak flow is a decent measurement for that uh, approximates FEV1. 